So my understanding of risk is that it's a science rather than an art. My training's in maths and science, so I, I kind of come at risk from that perspective. Um, economists define decision making in two different ways. You've got uh, decision making under conditions of uncertainty and decision making uh, under conditions of ambiguity. So the way I think of what I do is very much uh, uh, risk taking or decision making um, under, under those conditions of uncertainty. Decision making um, under uncertainty is where you know the out, uh, you know the probability of the outcomes. You just don't know what's going to happen yet. So if you flip a coin, that's decision making under uncertainty. There's a 50% chance of either outcome, but you, you just don't know what that outcome is going to be yet. And that's how I think of what I do. Um, I operate now as a professional gambler, so um, we place bets on uh, at the moment purely football matches. Um, and what I've done is I, I've written um, a series of pro probability models to predict the outcome of football matches. Uh, and then what I do is I have a team of developers um, and they automate those um, probability models in that they, 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 they be, uh, we write them as algorithms and then we have a, uh, a trading um, robot uh, betting bot if you like and that places bets with betting companies are prepared to take sort of large bets or bets from uh, professional gamblers such as us. So for example if you've got a football match such as Liverpool versus Manchester United we have a probability model that tells us the likelihood of the number of goals in the match or one or other, or other of the teams winning the game um, and if you think about it yeah, you can bet on that game on a number of different markets and a number of different ways right through the match. So for example if the game gets to the 19th minute um, and the score's still nil-nil, and I've got a probability model that's telling me that Liverpool were a certain percent uh, chance of winning the game after 90 minutes, then I can, um, th 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 our models tell us what that probability then becomes after the 19th minute. So, for example, if we started off with a 40% probability of Liverpool winning, we might get something like a 35% probability of winning by minute 19. Now, if we want to bet on that match, we can look at the odds, and, and, and this is what we, we do automatically, and see what the implied probability of those odds are. So if we could find odds of 30%, and with an implied probability of 30%, that means somebody out there is underestimating the chances of Liverpool winning. And if we can get our bet on with, uh, when, the, when we think there's a 35% probability, and our models are correct, then in the long run, on the average, if you're able to make a £100 bet at 35%, uh, on a 35% probability when somebody else is undervaluing it by 5%, you're going to make 5% profit on those bets. But you think of that decision making as, as an art, um, but you, um, you really can't afford to go broke um, in the short run. Even if you've got bets that are going to win you money in the long run, you've got to avoid that, that possibility, otherwise you're not a professional gambler anymore, you're broke and you have to go and do something else in life. Um, but Luckily, or happily as it turns out, you can even automate that part of the process. There's a, a, a formula called Kelly, uh, the Kelly formula or the Kelly criterion. And what that allows you to do is, if you've got a pot of money, is uh, maximise your chances of making exponential profits in the long run while uh, giving you the minimum chance of going broke in the short run. So that's kind of what we try to apply, this, this Kelly formula, so that you're, you're taking a part of your overall fund on each bet, try, uh, which will allow you to kind of uh, incrementally increase your, your profit whilst not going broke. So if you've got your £100 uh, overall pot, and the Kelly criterion tells you you can bet 10% of that on this outcome, you bet £10 and you've got 5% uh, average profit in that bet, that's only 50 pence. So if you think about it, you've got, you've got to make a lot of those bets to make any kind of living. Um, it might take you a long time to work out the probability in any one bet. So a 50 pence um, outcome um, is, you know, isn't going to make, make you a lot of money. So you, you, you need to start off with a large enough pot. But because of the Kelly criterion, you can actually measure how much of a pot you need. If you know how many bets on average you're going to be able to get as well, then you've, you've kind of got a complete... Um, system there, you know, you, you, you've got your money, you know how many bets you're going you're gonna to take, you know, the risk associated, you can calculate the probability of going broke at any time, um, and you know how much uh, profit you're likely to make off each bet if you've specified your models correctly. So in a sense, you've got, you've got um, uncertainty in the decision making, but you haven't really got, you haven't really got risk, 
so I'm arguing then that there isn't actually that much risk in being a professional gambler. You're a, pro you're a professional investor, you've, um, you've got your models um, and, and d d d d there's, there's very little risk in that sense. Whereas most of the decisions you make in everyday life, uh, uh, decisions under these conditions of ambiguity, well, you don't actually understand or you, you, it's unable to conceptualise all the different um, possibilities and outcomes. So even everyday decision making in the financial sense is more problematic for me than the betting decisions. The betting decisions come quite simply because I understand the different outcomes um, and the risk factors involved. If I do something like buy a mattress, uh, which I did recently for example, that's a much more difficult decision making process. You imagine it's going to be e easy, you go in the shop, you perhaps try a few out, you've got a um, range of different um, uh, buying options. But because of the way businesses and uh, companies market and advertise themselves and, they un and their understanding of how decision making becomes different, what they do is present you with a bewildering array of options so that you've got memory foam, you've got springs, you've got the option to have the mattress hand built, you've got mattresses with um, a layer of air in the centre to stop you from overheating. Um, you've got interest-free credit as an option, and that just and, and and all that ambiguity makes it more more difficult um, to, to make a decision. And I would argue that, in a sense, that that um, lack of understanding of the actual the utility of the mattress. I mean, how much benefit are you really going to get from a one thousand pound rather than a two hundred pound mattress? You know, actually, it's very difficult for you to understand what um, what you're actually going to get out of that. Um, so I would argue that, that, that my um, mistake is, is in some sense is easier than just navigating the everyday world of decision making in a financial sense.